Oh, RJ. Uh, Five, ten, and one eight. You gotta give him the one eight, bro. You can't tell the story. No, the two oh seven is way more important. I than find the song offensive. Why, Spencer? Why do you find it offensive? Little people. Short people. I'm a short person. Little people. The lyrics yeah. literally say short people have no reason to live. RJ, are you offended? Short in stature, but tall in opinion. There you RJ go. Young. There you go. RJ, how you doing, man? Uh, hey man, I'm six foot nine in the mind eye of RJ Young. <laughs> I am towering. <laughs> I am towering. Yeah. Uh, Kyler, um, I, one of the things, obviously, I, I'm not concerned with heights. I'm just not. The, uh, uh, we had a good clip from John Elway just explaining, you know, um, you, when you're back in the shotgun, it's not a big deal. You can mm-hmm. see everything. But uh, what did impress me, what I did like, was that he was 207. Um, I, I, I think 205, anywhere around there, is pretty mm-hmm. good for him. He's thick enough. He can probably take some punishment, and, and he's going to need to if he's going to play in this league. Uh, kind of your thoughts overall on his measurables so far. I think a lot of people lost the prop bet is what I think. I think there's a lot of 5-9 takes out there that no longer stand up. And more to that, do you know Marquise Brown measured in at 5-9? A lot of people would have lost that bet too, right? Because we're talking about short guys. And it turns out football players, as a rule, aren't yeah. really short. 5-8 is the average height of a, an adult man, right? So me and Spencer, yeah, we're fighting up against that, but guess what? <laughs> we didn't get combine invites either, you know? I mean, I just, I'm not caught up in the height either, but I'm really more interested in the conversation around should he or should he not throw? Is I, I'm not, you know, Paul was in here last Friday, and he made a great comparison. He's been to the combine. He's like, listen, you're not throwing to your receivers. Um, hey, it's a mixed bag as far as literally the footballs they give you. You might get a kicking ball. You know, I, I'm, I don't care if he's going to throw or not I, I, as much. If 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 he if he does not throw, obviously it makes his throwing session and his workout in Norman much um, much more important. But I like that because he controls the workout. He knows what they want to see. He knows what everybody wants to see. But he doesn't have to do it through the combine and on there schedule he can do it on his own he knows exactly what he's going to do he's throwing to the guys he knows he knows the footballs he's going to use and, and that's that's where I, I i think i i guess i would be okay with it if he's not going to throw then make sure he uh he, he does everything he needs to do to to, to have a good session at normal which is a really good way to look at this because we talk about he should come out there and compete and nobody really cares about whether or not his receivers catch the ball they want to see the ball come out of his hand they want to see his footwork all right You can see that at a controlled environment in Norman, Oklahoma, where he knows all of his receivers, where he knows the balls, like you said. But more to the point, that is much more like a simulation of a game. You're going to know those footballs. You're going to know your receivers. You're only going to run what you want to run, how you want to run it. I don't understand why that's a big deal, except to say (laughs) scouts are going to be butthurt that he showed up and got measured and sat down. I I don't fault anybody there. Last time I checked, they don't give quarterbacks their receivers right before they go out for a kickoff. Right. <laughs> and so why why is that hard for folks to get their head around? Except to say, hey, I'm selfish, and I want to see the dude go out there and throw for free. Sorry, if you're good at something, never do it for free. And if you're going to yeah, do it for I, free, do it under your own circumstances. Talking with RJ Young, uh, OU Insider. Dot com and yeah. the we YouTube talk. sensation. Fight yeah. me, he hosts. I yeah, listen to it, by the way, at the end of the show on Sunday. I was driving to the office. I had to do some work mm-hmm. after church. I, I went Solid the, episode. Him and Corey. Yeah, I job. went to the early yeah. session and uh, at church and then got out. Yeah. And I was like, man, here we the, go. Um, let's, let's, let's talk about uh, about this now because the tension that turns to the draft. Oh, look, obviously Kyler uh, is, is going to do whatever else he has to do. The process, blah, 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 blah. Draft is going to happen. The... Uh, uh, general manager of the Arizona Cardinals said the very committal comments of Josh Rosen is our quarterback for sure right now. Right now? Today? (laughs) Uh, Which spurs the question. Now, something is going to happen in terms of I think Arizona will will, will trade out of that spot uh, or they'll make a trade of Rosen and and draft him. Um, But I'll be interested to see. Now, this is the debate that's going to happen now. Uh, you know, Dwayne Haskins, uh, he, he measured in physically impressive as well. Again, complete opposite end of the spectrum almost in terms of, of a skill set, but still a very impressive guy, uh, no doubt. So we'll have this debate now for the next several months of Haskins or, or Murray, who you got. I know who you got, but 
that is an interesting question for, for guys making the pick. Well, also, you got to look at the film. You got to look at what does Dwayne Haskins bring and what does Kyler Murray bring. Hmm. And I was reading a really interesting piece by Ted Wynn on The Athletic where he gave Dwayne Haskins a second round grade. And he was saying a lot of the passes that we're giving him credit for are the five yard dink and dump sort of get it out of my hands passes. And he's getting a lot more credit for that shovel pass than he should. Right, we should really start thinking about wh- how, whether or not we should count those as passes in the stat book, and his footwork goes to crap when he's under pressure. Things that don't happen to Kyler Murray. So if you're talking about pure quarterbacking skills from guys that watch film and study this kind of stuff, they're even saying, "Hey, he's going to go in the first round because quarterbacks are a need." But this is not a first round grade quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. And to your point about maybe trading out of that spot and Arizona doesn't want to be there, I'll submit to you this analytics nugget because I was building out my show for Sunday and I was looking at the 2007 draft because we're talking about Kyler Murray throwing and Calvin Johnson getting static for not running and then at 239 he dropped 4-3 but but coming out of that draft you had the Browns thinking about taking Adrian Peterson you had the Raiders still going to take Jamarcus Russell we still don't know what that is Robert Meacham was being compared to Calvin Johnson and the Lions were almost certainly not going to draft Calvin Johnson because, well, they had receivers and they saw Mike Williams wash out. So nobody really knows, right? And that was coming out of 2007, and I get it's 2019, but it's all a crapshoot. We don't know anything until the day of. Talking with R.J. Young, and R.J., you brought brought up a good point. Um, I've (laughs) I've always attested that anybody that tells you what they think a team's going to do, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Nobody really knows. Um, It just takes Listen, it just takes that one guy, that one coach. I, the obvious there with Cliff Kingsbury, and I made this comment, and I, let me get your thoughts on it. If, if Cliff Kingsbury is going to implement his system, and that's what they hired him to do, we want you to run your offense, tweak it to the NFL, do whatever you want to do. Kyler Murray is infinitely more experienced in that type of offense than Josh Rosen, and it kind of blows your mind that in today's football, the prototypical under center guy, Josh Rosen at UCLA, he was prototypical. He, he, yeah, he just can't miss the NFL. He, he's not a system guy. He don't have to, yada, yada, yada. That, he is not qualified to run the, the system that Cliff Kingsbury wants to run, not even in the same zip code as, as Kyler Murray is. And it's just crazy to think that as a, as a rookie, Kyler Murray would be infinitely more experienced at running that offense than Josh Rosen, who's been in the league for a year. Uh, I I look at it this way. I think more and more it's about quarterback and offensive coordinator play caller pairings more than it is about system. Because we saw this with the Browns, right? It wasn't really working. Freddie Kitchens started calling the plays. And more to the point, he sat down with Baker and said, what do you want to run? And they came up with a game plan. You saw it with Nick Foles and uh, uh, is it Doug Marone? Who's the head coach at Philadelphia right now? Excuse me. Peterson. Thank you. Peterson. Peterson. They said, Nick, what do you want to run? And they won a Super Bowl. So if, if you could sit down with Josh Rosen and say, hey, man, I think we should run this, and Josh Rosen says, cool, I could do that, I think it could work. But if you're just going to go with a guy that you know already knows what you want to do, yeah, Kyler's that guy, but I'm not sold on the pairing because I know that Cliff Kingsbury had Pat Mahomes, who just won the MVP. And I also know that he had Baker Mayfield. And he didn't do a whole lot with those guys. And I think a lot of this is about Cliff Kingsbury's personality. He is the star of his football team, and that ain't going to work in the NFL. So no, no matter who the quarterback is, I'm really interested to see how he meshes with that guy because I don't necessarily think it's going to be a win-win. Now, you look at what he did with Manziel, and you got to go, okay, well, maybe that's a little bit off. But I'm still interested in that it's a dumpster fire in Arizona. Uh, the more I look at that organization, the more I look at the pieces they have, the more I look at how they're going to have to build out his offense, the more I don't see it. I just don't see it yeah. working. I don't like it at all. Yeah. Oh, it's working as it currently sits or working with Kyler? Working as it currently sits yeah, or okay. with Kyler because yeah. he won't necessarily have the pieces that you need. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I would say this, and we talked about before, if you're Arizona, okay, we we can say getting Cliff Kingsbury was a good idea, bad idea, okay, whatever. At the bottom line is, look, you've gone this far, you might as well commit to it. I know it's icy outside. You might as well turn into the skid and just go ahead and get a guy like Kyler Murray 
who who can run and do what Cliff Kingsbury wants more so probably than most most other guys out there that are available because Patrick Mahomes is not. Um, so maybe you start there, you build there, and, and, and see where it goes. Look, David Johnson is a nice player. Uh, Christian Kirk is a, is a nice player. They have some a, a couple pieces you could say there. Why not go with Tyler and see what what else he can build? I see where you're going with that, but what you would have to give away when you're talking about getting rid of Josh Rosen and what you might want to get in return, I don't see anybody that wants to make that trade with you. I mean, you'd have to put defensive players on the block that you don't want to. Nobody wants to see Pat Peterson leave Arizona. And by the way, when they're good, that's when they're going to be good. They're going to have to play defense. They're going to be good on defense. They have an opportunity to be really great on defense if Vance Joseph gets to do what he wants to do because he's got players that already fit the kind of scheme that he wants to run. Offensively, I really don't expect much, but if you're going to go in that direction, sure. Yeah, go get Kyler Murray, but you're not going to get back anything in return that you want. I mean, what are you going to get from New York, which seems to be everybody's obvious pick for a trade? They're not going to give you anything you want. They want offensive linemen. They just signed Eli again. They're not giving up Odell. They're not giving up Sterling. They're not giving up Ingram. They're not giving up Saquon. What else would you want from them? Who, the Giants? Yeah. They, they would want a pick, and, and I, I don't think you, they'd get the number six pick for Josh Rosen. Yeah, but picks are overrated, man. I mean, once you get out of the first 15, like I, I was looking at the analysis on this, you know, it, it's a crapshoot as to which one of these guys is going to be a pro bowler. Now, if you get a defensive player in the first or second round, you got a good, pretty good shot. Offensively, and especially with quarterbacks, you never know. I mean, I was just thinking about Sam Bradford, King Finesse, who, yeah, was hurt a lot, but that guy got paid a lot of money to do what? How many Pro Bowls did he make? One? <laughs> I can't remember. But your your point is taken. That's When it comes to quarterback, nobody really knows. And, and honestly, you know, I, I – I don't like it when people, you know, when when we say a guy's a gamer or when we say, hey, you turn on the lights, the guy just goes and plays. Um, I don't like it when people discredit that because it's true. Because I don't care your measurables. I don't care what you can do. I don't care your skill set. When the lights come on, can you play? That's when we will know if you can play. Because even some of the most surefire guys, just like you said, RJ, even the most Sure, fire. This guy is a can't miss. He's six five. He's two twenty five. He can he can throw any pass you want him to. He's got good intangibles. Yada yada yada. It doesn't matter until he looks across the field and the Ravens are staring him in the face, saying, "We're coming after you." I mean, so you don't know until you actually put those guys in the position. And like you said, it's a crapshoot. Well, and more to the point on quarterbacks, right? It really does depend on how patient you want to be with that guy. And I think that Josh Rosen's probably going to end up getting a raw deal because they're not going to be very patient with him at Arizona if he's the guy. And they're surely not going to be as patient as they should be if he goes to New York because they're going to be built basically once they get that offensive line in place to win right now. You know, I mean, you're talking about Saquon Barkley who's going to ascend into everybody's MVP conversation. You just signed Odell Beckham to a very large contract. You're getting into the prime of Sterling Shepard's career, and your Evan Ingram's about to start figuring it out. You need somebody that can complete passes right now, right? So, like, for me, yeah. I'm looking at a guy like Nick Foles and going, do I really want to go get him? You know, and that's the other thing that you have to answer if yeah. you're the Dolphins, if you're the Redskins, so for so on. Excellent as always, man. What do you got coming up uh, for Fight Me this week? So, uh, we will see, but I'm hoping to get an NFL player who went through the combine, not named Corey Hilliard. We'll talk a lot about his combine experience. We're also going to talk about whether or not Kyler threw, why he shouldn't have thrown, why he shouldn't have thrown. And, of course, I'm probably going to dunk on Sam Presti some more because that's one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> All right, guys. Good stuff. We'll talk All to you right, later. Buddy. All right, fellas. Bye. RJ Young. 10 o'clock.